Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to The One TV. This is the second episode of my show, Get Your Life with April Vassetti. I am the owner of You Thrive Coaching. And today, we are going to talk about how to get your credit life together. So, before we delve into all of that, I just would really like to set my intentions for the show today. My intention is that you guys receive all the information um <clears throat> all the information you want to receive, all the knowledge that you want to receive about credit and finances. And I appreciate your patience through this journey of me doing these shows and these videos because as I said, my first episode, um, social media and the media and all that stuff is hard for me. So I'm definitely stepping out of my comfort zone to be great. And so the purpose of me saying that is so that you guys too as well can step out of your comfort zone and do things that are going to help you excel. And having said that, I would like you guys also to send me and my family some lovin's. Um, today has been kind of a low energy day for me. This week has been um, my aunt is in ICU. And so just send me some lovin's and send my family some lovin's and some prayers and some great energy. Okay. So having said all of that, welcome to the second episode of Get Your Life. Um, as I said, the first episode, my life coaching practice handles um, areas dealing with health, relationships, finance, and I also offer life coaching just in general. So today we're going to be focusing on the finance part of that. So with my finance program, with um, You Thrive Coaching, what I do is I do credit repair. And on top of that, I also coach clients through their financial journey. Like, why is it that you're not making the money that you want to make? What is it that you really feel about money? that's preventing you from making the money that you want to make and then to dive into the subconscious and to figure out what is the story that you tell telling yourself that goes on replay it's kind of automated you know what i'm saying it's like breathing it's something you do without even thinking so we have to step into that subconscious to figure out what these habits and behaviors where they're stemming from so that we can change those habits and behaviors so that you can have the financial success that you want to have. Um, a lot of times you will be amazed how many people, um, you know, have been programmed or kind of trained by their their families or parents or teachers, you know, that say like, you know, you come from this certain type of background, so you're not meant to have financial success. So that's just the story that you tell yourself is that I don't deserve it or, you know, I'm not going to achieve it. So, you know, like why even try? So my program helps us get to the bottom of all these things so that we can excel. And then um, I also offer credit repair. So, like I said, I am the sole owner of You Thrive Coaching, but I also own another business, co-own another business with the owner and founder of Credit Achieved. His name is Brendan Richardson. And um, together with that company, we just strictly do um, credit repair. So, shout out to Brendan. Um, so, let's, let's, let's dive into some good stuff. So first, I have to drop a disclaimer. <laughs> we have to make sure we're all legal here, okay? So I'm going to read this ish verbatim, okay? Make sure I'm covering my own ass, you know? So um, any credit strategies or credit repair rewards examples 
are an estimation of what is possible. Everybody's credit profile is different, therefore will render different results. Results are based on different factors. You can use caution and check with your accountant, lawyer, professional advisor before acting on any of this information or any other information regarding your credit <clears throat> or your finances. So, let's get into some good stuff. So, first, I want to present this book. I know it's backwards. I'm not going to go through the process of changing my camera. But anyway, the book is called Credit Secrets, and it is by Scott and Allison Hilton. Now, before I got into the journey of my business and, you know, doing credit repair, okay, I got that book. And when I say that book, I've read a lot of books, of course, and I've done a lot of research because that's what I do. <laughs> and that book gave the, the most accurate information. It was very self-explanatory. It didn't use a lot of the jargon that we don't understand. It is very simplistic. And it's by a married couple who actually went on the journey themselves to repairing their credit. So how I came about this book, right, is um, everybody knows I don't watch TV. I hate the media, all that good stuff. So I'm staying the night at my aunt's house, right? And so she likes to have the TV playing like it's background noise, right? So I wake up in the middle of the night and the infomercial is on. And this guy is like, um, not his exact words, but he's talking about credit. And he's like, how are we playing a game? right? And we're sitting on the bench while the other players are playing the game and dictating whether we're winning or not. And I was like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so I went on to continue to watch this infomercial and it was Larry King. And so he's interviewing um, the husband and the husband is talking all this good stuff. So, you know, I ordered it and it was a very great decision you know spirit woke me up in order at the perfect time to receive that message so i do encourage you guys to pick up the book it has a lot of um letters that you can use to dispute things to you know um take off inquiries all that beautiful stuff um i went through this process first with this book you know I, I used my own credit to experiment with and shout out to my mother and my sister for letting me use their credits to experiment with and it works the deal is is it you know it takes it takes time but it definitely works the difference in my company credit achieved and, um, you know, whether you go through Credit Achieved or You Thrive Coaching, the difference between my company and this book and other companies is that Brandon Richardson, the owner, has actually sat down, okay, sat down with a couple of different lawyers and they have wrote out documents, <clears throat> okay, with the laws and all this jargon, all, all these words you know, and statements that they use that we read and we're like, you know, like, what are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? But they have created these documents and it goes along because um, as most people don't know, everything is computer generated. And so you're going with algorithms. So even when you like, if you're looking at your credit report, whether, you know, from whatever venue you're looking at it from and you decide to dispute there are no actual people looking at your credit report and saying, okay, so we're going to not dispute this or dispute. That doesn't happen. It's just computer ag algorithms. That's it. So um, what our lawyers have done, like I said, it's got that good jargon going and using the laws to help you clear the negative items off of your credit. So that's the difference in my company and these books and most other companies okay so um let me see oh and two just just as a side note <laughs> 
totally coincidental. I love coincidences. Um, but totally coincidental as I was going through the journey of using this great book, um, so was the owner. He also went through that journey. We didn't even know like that we were on the same um we were on the same journey high value knowledge yes thank you friend um so we didn't even know we was on the same journey and he feels the same way as the owner of the company he feels the same way that this is a very good book to read and get reference on i cannot stress that enough to do the research your credit is your livelihood unless you're going sovereign or something your credit is your livelihood do not let other players win the game or lose the game for you don't let them dictate your path okay so get out here and do the research don't even listen to me hell <laughs> get out there and do the research yourself so let's just go over some quick basics so Credit is used for an arraignment of things. Now, be patient with me because some of this stuff, you know, some of you guys are going to be like, I already knew that. That's common knowledge. But you'll be amazed how much um, knowledge is not common. <laughs> okay? So, we use our credit for, you know, things like applying for apartments, phones, um, a big one is that a lot of people don't know is that when you um, when you are you know getting your utilities cut on like your power bills and you know whatever other utilities you get cut on a lot of times your rates are decided upon how high your credit score is and when you're getting insurance, your rates can vary depicted upon how high your credit scores are. A lot of people do not know that insurance companies really believe that the lower your credit score is, the more likely you are to make a fraudulent claim. <laughs> so they are, um, I'm trying not to use so much slang, but basically they are taxing your ass because you have not a good credit score. So your credit report is a breakdown of your credit history from all three rules. So they use the credit, your credit reports are used to determine your, your credit worthiness. Okay, so your score is just a numeric, um, representation basically of your credibility all right so <clears throat> let's 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 get down to this so the three major credit bureaus are in the u.s are experian transunion and equifax okay what a lot of people do not know is first of all these are not government owned agencies these are not government-owned agencies at all. These are privately-owned agencies, okay? Let's put that shit out there. And they make billions. I said billions. A lot of y'all likes to go use Google. Go Google it now, okay? They make billions of dollars by selling your information to lenders, okay, and institutions. Institutions, they make billions. So like I said, a lot of people's fear with dealing with the credit bureaus is that they really believe that these are government agencies when that is in fact um, not the case, right? <clears throat> okay, so... Um, Okay, so that could sound kind of scary, that the fact that these people are using your information <laughs> without your consent. Although they are doing that, there are guidelines that they must follow in order to do that, okay? So um, let's talk about the difference in credit scores and your FICO score, right? So when you go to these apps or you get um, your credit score through like your bank or sometimes your credit cards are offer it or credit karma. Those sites give you your credit scores, but they do not for the most part give you your FICO score. Your FICO score, you actually have to go to the Brule 
you know, the actual credit bureau to get your FICO scores. And most of the time, they don't make it. It can't be that easy. They usually make you pay for it, okay? <clears throat> Even, um, you know, by law, you are allowed to have one free credit report a year from each bureau. Um, but that doesn't usually include your FICO score. So anyway, your FICO score can be retrieved by, by like I said, the major rules. And then, like I said, let's just keep in mind that all this stuff is computer generated. And so there are different ways that they come up with your scores and your FICO scores. Your FICO scores are used by you know, most of the time, major, um, major lenders, like if you're doing a home loan or you're doing a car loan, you know, um, and then the different, <laughs> I know it's a lot, the three different rules also use different um, credit score. I mean, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, they use different scoring versions of like the FICO, um, so there are like 19 different, um, systems or scoring, um, versions that they use. So that's why your score can vary differently depending on what rule you're looking at. And then depending on what kind of loan, <clears throat> what kind of loan you're, um, going to get or trying to apply for okay so but i just want to give you guys a general um a, a general structure of how it works out with your fico score first we're going to do fico and then we're going to do your um your like general credit score um your payment history is 35 percent <laughs> is 35% of your score. So 35% of your score is just paying your bills on time, okay? So I want to add in a side note that a lot of people don't know, okay? Say you're having a rough month this month. So besides your credit card, so you're having a rough month, right? So what you do is you pay your, pay your minimum on your credit cards, pay those on time. But what a lot of people don't know is with your like mortgage or your car loans, you actually have 29 days after your due date to pay your car mortgage loans before they are reported to the credit bureau as late. So you have 29 days after your due date to pay before it is actually considered late. A lot of people don't know that. And I'm, I'm telling you guys not so that you can procrastinate, but I'm telling you guys so that if you do have a hard month, instead of just saying, you know, like, F it, I'm late. I'm just not, I'm just gonna wait. And, you know, try to get it in before those 29 days and most, Nine times out of 10, you can get it in before those, you know, the next 29 days, you know? <clears throat> okay, so like I said, 35% of your score is your payment history. So then 30% of your score is what you owe or your debt. And then 15% is your credit history, which I think these are self-explanatory. Your credit history is you know, how long um, the length, how long you've had an account, the length of time that you've had an account, okay? And then 10% goes into the variation of what kind of credit you have. You know, like you got a mortgage, you got a car loan, you got credit cards, student loans, you know, so that's 10%. And then, um, so, okay, so that's your FICO, right? So now your general credit score, like where places like Credit Karma, or like I said, if you're um, dealing with the banks or, you know, <clears throat> if they're giving you free apps, you know, wh wherever you're getting a credit score, the basic credit score breaks down like this. So your payment history, like I said, is 30%. Okay, this is like your credit score. This is different from your FICO. So um, negative information, this is important, negative information on 
your um, credit report is 30%. And when I say negative information, I mean things such as tax liens, bankruptcies, um, repossessions, charge-offs child support and yes i did say child support they are now putting child support on your credit report a lot of people don't know that but that is actual and factual okay um so i think i said charge offs and so the most important one i think well not the most important one but the most common one and the most like i guess controversial would be collections so just so that you know um collections, collection agencies, when they call you or contact you through mail, all you have to do is tell them one time to quit contacting you. Anytime they contact you after that, that is illegal. It's illegal. Let me tell you why. It's illegal because you don't owe them no money. <laughs> okay. Collection agencies are strictly hustlers. Okay. They out here you know, okay, okay, so let me tell you this first. First of all, when you make an agreement with a company and say you cannot pay them back for whatever reason, right? These companies are insured. They have insurance, <laughs> okay? So whether or not you pay them, they're taken care of, right? So what happens is, is they... It's like, imagine a big, I don't know, just like data, you know, with 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 all these people that have owed money to a company. You know what I'm saying? These collection agencies go in there and they get that data and they buy from these companies your, um, your debt for pennies on the dollar, okay? And then they attack you. <laughs> They attacked you to get the money so that you can pay them when you actually, okay, listen to me, you have never signed any paperwork with these people. You have never opened an account with these people. You do not have an agreement with these people, <laughs> okay? I don't know if you're catching on to what I'm saying, but um, yeah. So always, okay, so if you, okay, let me tell you guys this, okay. So what happens is people get people get scared. I want to remind you guys not to get scared. There's nothing to be afraid of. Do the research and know your rights so that you are not afraid, okay? Because what happens is a lot of times these collection agencies will call you, right? And um, they'll tell you something like, you know, we can settle this debt for a cheaper price or, you know, they'll threaten you and tell you that you, you know, you have to pay it in full. But they, people actually pay them because, you know, they tell you either by paying us, we're going to stop this from going onto your credit report or they say something to the effect of, if you pay us now, we will take it off your credit report. Mind you that most of them don't do it. <laughs> you know, like I said, they are hustling. They are trying to get their money. Okay, that's what's going on, right? So, um, like I said, remember all of that about those, those collection agencies. So, next is your, uh, your credit utilization, which is 25. 25% of your score. So what I mean by that is like, say, you know, you don't really have any credit and you just have, um, you know, you just have a card. And so the card, the limit on the card is $1,000, right? And so you just made some charges of $500. The credit rules would like you to keep your credit utilization under 30%. So with that $500, you are now at 50%. So, like I said, credit utilization um, makes up for 25% of your credit. So, that part of your credit score is going to drop, right? Because you are utilizing more than 30%. People <clears throat> who have really good credit scores only utilize about 10% um, of... Uh, only use about, They use about 10% of their credit, okay? 
So um, next is the credit mix. That's about 10%, which you guys, um, I'm sure, I mean, that's self-explanatory. Okay, and then lastly, 5% of your credit score is made up of just inquiries, all right? So um, now that we've got that out of the way, um, I have a lot of information and it's a short amount of time. Okay, so let me give you guys these little tidbits. So um, first of all, I wanna tell you guys to keep your names and your addresses um, updated. Because say you do have an account that you want to dispute. Um, say you do have an account that you want to dispute. A lot of times they are associated with old names and addresses. So it'll be easier for the account that you're trying to dispute to come off if you keep your names and addresses updated. Okay? And then so another little tidbit here is that most people get super frustrated, right? So what they do is the consumer will have this credit card <clears throat> that they charged all this ish on and they'll get frustrated and they'll be like, I'm going to pay this card off and then I'm going to cancel it. <laughs> that is the worst thing that you can do. Let me tell you why. As I told you, your payment history, your credit um utilization and your your payment history your credit history and your credit utilization are major components to your credit so when you pay off that card and then you cancel it you take away the history the fact that you don't have any utilization on that card and so that's gonna actually hurt your score versus helping it so you know cut it up or or hide it <laughs> or, or something, but do not um, cancel the card, okay? You do a disservice to yourself. And then another thing is that people tell you, or most credit repair specialists will say, you know, do not, um, do not transfer balances. I say transfer balances. If you have a credit card with a high interest rate, and then all of a sudden you come up on a credit card with a lower interest rate, <laughs> you know, it would make more sense to transfer that balance to the credit card with the lower highest, I mean, with the, with the lower interest rate, right? Okay, so um, a lot of times, this is another tidbit, so a lot of times um, consumers are concerned about why, they're like, my credit score is kind of decent. I'm not sure why I'm not able to get this card or, or this loan through this bank, but most banks have what we call a five by 24 rule. So that means that if you have five open accounts, okay, if you open up five new accounts, within a period of 24 months, okay, they will decline whatever you're applying for, okay, regardless of how high your credit score is. So if you have an 850, it does not matter, okay? That's with a lot of um, major banks, okay? And then what else, 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 what else? So um, trade lines, for people that do not have a lot of credit or are needing an extra oomph. If you know someone that has, you know, that doesn't really use their credit cards, you can do what we call piggybacking. They can actually put you on a credit card. You don't need to have any access on it. You know what I'm saying? We're just trying to help out your credit profile. Or you can get in contact with companies like myself, Credit Achieve, You Thrive Coaching, or other repair companies that offer what we call trade lines. That's the same difference. These um, You're just paying basically for an account. So like say you have a woman who paid on an account for 20 years, her mortgage, she never missed a payment, you know, as we talked about payment history, credit, um, utilization, you know, all that good stuff, that's dramatically going to get your score to increase. And then too, just a little simple tidbit for those youngins or for those of us that don't have any credit, secured cards are good for helping build your credit too. Okay. So I promised you guys that I would 
tell you guys how to get over twelve thousand dollars i said twelve thousand yes i did twelve thousand twelve thousand dollars worth of credit onto your credit report let me tell you how let me tell you how so there are four companies that that can be gone through that they don't care about your um your credit score so these cards you can apply for and get approved for you know you pay like a hundred dollars for an item or something you know and they give you all of this credit now what do we talk about credit utilization so most of the times you're not going to use these cards you know what i'm saying you're just doing it for the credit right so the first site is my jewelers club.com they give you five thousand dollars my jewelers.com and they do not check your credit which means they do not um take out an inquiry or any of that then we have a company called new coast direct dot com they give you five thousand dollars so bam right there that is a whopping ten thousand dollars ten thousand dollars right now with ox publishing dot com i cannot remember i'm sorry but i cannot remember if they do an inquiry i don't remember but even if they do that's still they give you twenty five hundred dollars in credit and then hunting chase.com i'm for sure that they do um they give they check your credit so that, that'll be an inquiry on your credit report and they give you fifteen hundred dollars so like i said these cards and these places are not based upon your credit score and you don't have to use these cards it's actually better if you don't right because that's more available credit okay so there is twelve thousand dollars right there for you that is my gift to you honey for free 99 all right you guys so i am at the end of my time i'm actually over so i want to invite you guys to go check out you thrive coaching go check out credit achieved and we are so thankful for the one network yes we are we are thankful for lanita miss lanita nash for getting this all together you guys keep tuning in to all the programs there's a lot of beautiful spirits on here with a lot of great information that will help evolve you as a human okay so you guys check me out again the first tuesday or wait where where this is the first tuesday <laughs> the third Tuesday and we're going to have another episode of Get Your Life with April Bassetti. I love you guys. Peace, bliss, and love. Have a great day. All right. Bye. If I can hang this thing up.